Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Only Facts. In today's episode I want to start off by addressing a few comments from the last video. The first one is from True Noon who said that it's about time we started de-weeding these tracks simply because when these get laid as new there would obviously not be these weeds so what I want to do is share with you guys a tip that I learned from another YouTuber by Steven Spry. I'm sure a few of you have heard of Steven before and seen his videos if you haven't make sure to check those out but I was watching one of Steven's videos and he came up with the idea of clicking into the asset tool here and if we go over to the paint tools and search for the ballast that we want to paint and then by being in the train follow cam like we are now if we set our brush size to something that's about the same size as the tracks uh, or just that middle gap in the tracks we can keep the strength fully up go for this circle area and now all I need to do is click and hold in the middle of the track here and you can see just because the camera follows along the train all I have to do is very slightly move just to keep the mouse in the middle of the track there and we'll get the whole of this track painted that's if I don't click off now I think I'll do this one now with you guys just up to the top and then what I'll do is I'll do the other train route after and I'll do it I think towards the end of the video or maybe even at the end we'll have a ride on the original train line from Gorleston and I'll do this a longer sort of the outro because I know there is some of you who've been asking for longer um, videos of riding the actual lines themselves but then I know it's also not a thing that a lot of you look forward to so but yeah all you do is ride along the train like this I'll hold my mouse button down now as a click and you can see that is all you really need to do and you could do this by speeding up the time as well if you can if you can keep your mouse steady and you know sort of be accurate enough with it to not miss bits it looks like the tracks are going to join here so I can take this off and then but is there any further up there isn't on that single track so I'll just sort of double check over this now to make sure that we've missed none I think I missed a little bit here when I was swapping the camera angle which is there and we must have started it just after this corner here there we go there's another couple of things I want to address from the comments in the last section guys one of them is from and I believe I'm pronouncing this correctly so if I'm not please do forgive me and explain in the comments how I should be I believe it's from Jan B and he's he said that the the shipping harbour the passenger harbour that we put in in the last episode he believes that we, we didn't need to have that bus route up to the station. I'll show you in a second what I mean, but hopefully we can add another passenger building or a street connection on the opposite side of the tracks. We'll be able to connect in without having that secondary bus route up and down. That should help to save us a little bit of money. As you can see, the money is going up now. We're not massively, um, you know, I'm not massively overconfident with the financial situation at the moment, but it does seem that we are in the green and all of our routes at the minute looks like they're making a profit other than the shipping route um, so that looks like we've got all of that track painted in as I said I'll do the other one at the end we just get our line finances up we'll close that window now to get rid of the, the train sound in the background but you see if I sort this by um, finances the Bridlington and Amersham lines making us 469,000 a year and the Gaul and Strood line is making us uh, 264 but we're losing 131 on the shipping line. There is people coming onto it now and that's slowly picking up. Um, but if we can get rid of this line here, this bus line in the middle, you can see here the ferry transfer line is losing us 11. Now I know 11 is not you know, the biggest thing in the world, but every little bit of money at the start of this game is going to help us. Um, but what Jan was saying is if we can move this shipping line maybe just up a little bit and closer and add a building on this side with one road connection, it may be... In, in line there so what I want to do is try that out so we want to get another port here I'm glad in a way because I don't like see how this terrain's turned out at the front I didn't notice it when we were placing it but I'm really not a fan of that I do have to say so what I may do actually thinking about that is put down a piece of road first so it is nice and flat I'm not sure if this will make a difference and make it fit in any better at all but we'll see. It looks like those tendals are still going up. So what we may have to do is flatten some terrain here. And I do want, want to be careful because this can be pretty expensive. 
Yeah, see that money's been drained already. But if we hit fast forward here, I don't believe we've got any of our loan left. That might have been a mistake there that I shouldn't have done. It might be something we have to come back and revisit replacing this harbour. Because these aren't cheap. That's 240000 You can see it's still cutting in there. So, if we were to just try it the other way, and for now accept what the ter terraform is doing here until we have a bit more money. I mean, we're up to 100000 already. What we need to do first is get this other building added. So if we go for a small building, we don't want, and we want to mirror it. I don't want anything too big, but it, you know, I don't want this side to be bigger than the main entrance side. So that I, that makes sense to me there, having the same. And you can see that it really is on a slope this land here. But if we can get a road connection across here that's not too aggressive, again, you see what it's doing with this platform here. This is what I'm not not a big fan of, to be honest. We can start. There's the top of a hill here, by the look of it. I can come to here and then up this road. Again, no, there we go. That looks a bit more like it. It's, it is still cutting the front of that. Um, I'm trying to see if there's a way. If any of you guys know a better way of doing this, that looks like the best I'm going to get there, to be honest with you. The terrain's not too bad there. It sort of leveled itself out. Now, if I come round and down to the bottom here, not like that, but I can pull away from the main run, just like so, and then connect that up. I mean, it's doing all sorts of bits with the terrain again here, but it's not too much of an aggressive slope. And I think once we get one of our trains delivered and we can accept that, we'll try it. There we go. And now what I want to see is if this, by clicking on this harbour here, it is actually in line of there which means that Jan was correct and we can actually get rid of this line here so if we sell these two vehicles and then we get rid of that the Gauliston ferry transfer we won't need that line anymore and then we will just get rid of these two stops as well and actually we'll get rid of the road network simply because this is going to be one of our main stations on the route down so it, it and uh, takes away the need for us to sort of mess about and cross over those roads on the way into town. I just want to double check now. Yeah, if we click that. Now I can see though that it's not highlighting this bus stop. Which to me says, I believe I'm right in thinking that anybody coming in via train will be able to get down to the harbour. But the people from the town directly won't. So maybe that means that the people from Gorleston can't use this ferry anymore. I do want to just see, um, or I'll keep an eye on later on, when one of these trains comes back, we should be able to see people walking down to the ferry. So we'll, we'll come back and have another look at that at a later date, just as the train's going back. Now, the other thing is, I've still got it in three times speed here. We do seem to have a, a big build-up of passengers coming to the station. We've got 44 people waiting, and these land hours are only taking six people at a time. I want to see whether we've got anything new yet. And passenger wise, it looks like we have now unlocked the, the Swiss Saurer. It says that these Saurer chassis and badder superstructure were already around in 1913. Unlike its predecessors, this bus already had side entrances for passengers. So that carries four at 25 miles an hour. A land hour goes 12, so it's almost doubling the speed actually. But if we get the one with with it that looks like it's pulling some kind of trailer, it goes up to nine passengers and 19 miles per hour. So I think we'll put those into Gorleston here. So if we go to manage these vehicles in Gorleston, and we replace those with those Saurers, that should be quite a good... Ah, now it hasn't... Was it, I may have misclicked there. It hasn't replaced them with the ones with the trailers. There we go. So these can now carry nine people. And it's actually got the line name on the side. See, I'm not a big fan of that, because, but that's simply because of my naming convention. It says RP, so I may have to look at that and see what whether I can change that. But maybe if it's only this one vehicle that does it, then it won't be too much of an issue. Yeah, so as I said, guys, Sauer are a Swiss manufacturer. They used to manufacture things like... Um, sewing machines and uh, vehicles and all manner of things during the early 1900s. 
I did have a quick look onto uh, Wikipedia about them, and it's that's the kind of things that they were producing, mainly sort of uh, industry things. But right, okay, so that's that's that bus route updated, and we'll keep an eye on that to see if these passengers are getting shifted more. I think that now they're carrying nine people away each time. That should be a decent size increase. And then the next thing that I wanted to address in this episode um, was the, a comment by Talon. Now, Talon advised me to turn on the, the natural town growth mod. And I did have a look, and I was unsure when I read his comment whether we already had it, but we do already have that one in. But thanks for the, uh, the suggestion, Talon. It is a great mod, and it's already enabled. So hopefully, I mean, if we just have a look at this one and we look at the target population, we're already up 10% in Gorleston. On the chart, so you can see the population, it did take a little bit of a dip in 1907, but you can see now it's on the way up. I wonder what that dip was around. I'm wondering whether that's when we um, got rid of one of the bus stops by accident or disconnected the station at some point, maybe. I'm not too sure, but it looks like it's on the way back up now. Now that as that train's just pulled in, uh, you can see this, Ali Stewart's just got off the train here. And she's going via this line. Okay. I think this is uh, a cool feature of the game, to be fair. Guys, you can you can click on an individual person. So if we just pin that so we can get back to it. Her, her destination is this industrial building. We can click and we can see that this is down in Saltash. But it'll tell us that she's going via this yellow shipping line. So we know now she's just got off the train and she's on her way down to that connection is working. So thanks again for that, Jan. We're back up to 168,000 here. The only line that's now losing his money is this Saltash shipping line. But as you can see, there's now 25 people. Now the line's bedding in. There's 25 people on the ship. And there'll be more people coming to wait here, I've no doubt. Now that by, by now, people will be coming from New Biggin all the way down. And it does look like we've got some high passenger numbers waiting here as well. 46 people, 44 people. So I think what we're going to have to do here, guys, is do the same thing here and replace these with those same buses with a higher capacity because at the minute we've only got eight, a capacity of eight. Oh, actually, it is only one more, but the speed's quicker on the 25. I think we'll keep those here. But one thing I did notice is this guy's about to hit, actually. See how he's now only getting 12 miles per hour? The top speed of these, I believe, is 25, as we've just seen, but this one stretch of road just here is a small street and the small streets have a speed of 12 miles per hour you can see in the description there so what I want to do is upgrade that to medium because that's slowing down a lot of our, our run through the town and I just want to make sure that none of our other parts of the line here are going on small road doesn't look like they are now the route is all coming through here just because if that one part of the road slowing them down it's, it could cause sort of a bottleneck and sort of some traffic issues but this new big in line, so even though we're going to keep those same vehicles... Oh, it looks like there's a bit there, actually. Yes, you see there, he's, he's had to slow down to 12 miles per hour. We'll connect that up there. And I believe the country road's still 25, so the other side of that, we are fine. But what I do want to do is, because we've got a lot of people waiting, I'm going to add another four vehicles to this line. No, I'm not, because we can't afford it. How much is one of these sours? 100,000. Wow, okay, so we'll add another one to it then for now. We'll just, we'll have to sort of bleed those in. I think um, at the end of this episode, I'm going to pause the time and then let it play for a bit so we can pay back this loan. We are in the whole 12 million. It's costing us 120,000 a year at the minute for our loan interest as well, which is not great and, it, and is giving us a big dent in the, in the wallet at the minute. Now, getting into the main part of this episode, guys, I've been thinking with how I want to go. And in the on the last episode, we did. I did have another comment, and the other comment was from. I just want to get this right and make sure I'll have a look. Um, I'll get back to it. But there was a few. There was a few people basically. I can't find the name right now. I can't just select it off what I'm looking at in front of me. But um, oh, there we go. It's a uh, Patrick Hank, I believe it looks like. Uh, I can't pronounce exactly what the name says, but P T R K H L R N K. And he's basically said that 
my co one of the comments I made in the last video was about using all different kinds of transport and alluding to the fact that trains weren't going to be the, the only thing that everyone wanted to see. And I just wanted to reassure you guys that there is going to be plenty of trains. I've downloaded a hell of a lot of mods that we can use, and that's one of the reasons for doing this series. Um, we can use a load of different train mods and things, but I have also got you know some bus ones, some tram ones, and things like that. I haven't really looked at any aircraft mods because I don't tend to use them a lot. In this series, I think we are going to have just one route end-to-end -end for passengers, flying, flying the aeroplanes across. But what I want to do is almost use Gorleston here as a, a central for this side of the river and then probably either Seam or Shepton Mallet for the other side. And I want to have some local trains that run, sort of, that stop at every stop or on the way through. And then maybe an express that goes from Haslington through to Gorleston as its next stop. So it bypasses Faversham and Shybrook, but then goes all the way up, skips Bridlington. And I think a sort of main line this side will come from Stockfold around Colne to Bridlington and down and back. And then Leatherhead. I'm, I'm hoping to sort of wait for some kind of electric trains, maybe of the, the type of Red Arrows, Red Arrow one that you'll be familiar with. A little multiple electric unit that can somehow come up the hillsides and out of the base and almost like a Swiss Alp kind of route from Leatherhead connecting into probably Faversham or Shirebrook as a just sort of, so that's got to sort of be coming through the mountain range a bit more of a you know a nice looking route that makes more sense a Swiss Alp kind of route but the last thing I want to do for today's episode and the bulk of it if you like is connect Shirebrook into Gorleston but I want that to you know be aware i want us to be aware that in future it's going to be going off to haslington so i need to be wary of where i'm going to place this station so i want to have a look at the town we've got the residential this side now although it's people come from the residential to get on the train people come to the town to go to the industrial and commercial as we saw with that lady earlier who got off the train in gorleston um she was heading to one of the industrial buildings so what we need to be aware of is that if we're going to put this train line in, we will need another bus or tram route going through the town. The wine type F will be a cool tram to use the double decker there as well. Um, but if we kick in here and we go for another, I want to use the same kind of trains that we're going to be using. Main building, we'll stick with small. Um, and I think we're going to connect to this side because otherwise coming around this, build, this hillside here and then turning, I think it's going to be too steep to come up this. Up, up on the inside of the town towards the mountain side so we'll go on the outside and it gives us some availability for connecting in that uh, tram or bus route as well so we're going with the bull bull head masts as we have been we don't need uh, we don't need a mast for catenaries and then we'll start running this down catenary no we'll go with keep and then i want to sort of head around the outside of this town bring it down but money is is starting to play into it I'll, I'll put it on three times speed just so the money is ticking in i'm not sure whether it's going to be better for us to leave from this side if i just look at what platform we're using at the moment we're using the left hand side there okay so i'll bring two routes out originally here and then i think originally we'll just bring the one side up that's going to be the best way for us to do it if we pull both of these out straight and then we'll just run single track all the way up. So coming out of the station, we want to get onto the left-hand side, as we would be running in Britain. And then we want to go as straight as we can along this coastline. 65,000 there. I want to be avoiding any huge cut throughs if possible like that. Just to keep keep the finances down as much as we can keep down to was one there for about 60 69,600 there obviously at a later date guys it's going to be well worth us coming back through and redoing these lines when money isn't as much of an issue anymore um, just to make them a little bit more efficient and get rid of all the lumps and bumps in the lines I need to be careful now that we do start need to go we do need to start going uphill. I don't want too sharp of an angle here, so I want to sort of cross this road about here. That make that should make sense that we cross we come out of the town and we're crossing just sort of as the, the dirt country road starts there. 
So if we start aiming for that on the way up, it should make for the best. It looks like, guys, I'm going to have to stick a pause in here and uh, wait for some money to come in. Oh, no, there we go. It's just it's just ticked over, but we are sort of on a nice edge here. That does lead me to thinking I am going to have to do what I just said, and after this episode, let time spin on a little bit or move forward, and we'll start um, paying off some of the loan, because I think it is some of the loan repayments that are killing us at the minute, and we're waiting for those trains to deliver. Once we start getting enough people travelling that we've got enough for an extra train running on each of the two routes that are existing already, um, I think that's going to be, you know, when the profit starts hitting. And we're going to look. We're going to have to look into how we're going to afford this next train on this route. Again, that might be a, a pause and wait for it. Because you can see at the minute, we are making a decent amount of money. The ship's now only losing 35000 we are making money, we're just at the situation at the minute at the start of the game as you regularly are where we're just having to wait for the money to come in before we can make our next move. There we go, 118. So this is coming up through the forest here. We want to cut through. Now I don't know if you've seen anybody mention this kind of thing before guys, but you can see if I try and cut across here, how it's lifting the road up like that. It's always better if you can um, is to get the rail as close as you can and then to pause the game, delete the road and put the rail through and then lay the road over rail. So I'm going to pause it now just so we don't destroy anything in terms of this town's connectivity. And I want to run this through and aim it towards the station in that sort of area. And then we'll go for a road and we want the, the country road it is only a small country road from here, I believe. Yes. And then... If we click that and you can see it's not, it gives us a nice flat crossing then. And then we'll put the gate in. Uh, we'll go for a two track because I think I am going to put... Well, actually, if we go for... For now, we'll go for the signs maybe. We are going to double track this eventually. Now, we'll go for the gates, but I'm not sure how it's going to work in terms of... us only having the one track going through at the moment. Uh, there you go, we should be able to start time off again now. Yes, there we go. And now we want to pull this into the left hand side. We're going to have to take pretty much what that gives us just to give us the straightest run into the station. We want the smoothest, the smoothest incline down to here possible really. And we've selected road by accident there as well. This is all because of this new mouse that I have. I keep clicking extra buttons with my thumb on the side of the mouse. And it's cycling through these menus here. If you're wondering how I'm clicking all these random buttons and clicking out of menus all the time, I'm just still getting used to this mouse. Um, but there we go, that one, 163 is there. So we now have everything we need to get a train on the line and get down to this town. We just need the money to be able to afford it. So we're connected in at this end. So the train depot from here... We will need to put in an extra little connection here because at the minute the trains can only get onto the one side of the rail here. So I'll need I'll need a turning coming out of the depot and onto this line. It's probably going to be too sharp of a curve here, isn't it? It'll come out to here. I want it to curve as much as possible, which is there. We'll wait for some money again just to tick over. We'll stick it back on three times while we're waiting for the money. Hopefully we can get this and just use the one depot going through. It's actually got too much slope, it says here. But I don't need to be coming downhill. That's not something that I've asked it to do. So if we go back up to flat, there you go. It'll let me do that. And now if it will to curve round, I don't think it's going to. It's not. Okay, so we'll pause the game while we've got 100,000. And we'll make this into a depot that's going to work for us in either direction. If I can put a depot and set it a little bit further back, um, we don't need catenary. We can put it somewhat, somewhat 90 degrees to the track. Makes a bit more sense to me. We'll connect the original back in just so we know we haven't destroyed anything in terms of going that direction. Then we can connect straight in here and put a signal on it. I will just double slip this. And then I'll, oh, I always click the lines to make sure me adding in a connection hasn't swapped over anything. Because sometimes you'd put in a line here and that train will then come on 
the wrong side all the way to here and then decide to switch. I have had that happen before, so it's better to keep um just keep a check on it whenever you're adding any new connections in. So now we have the connection available to get onto either track going into this station, which means we can set up the new line now, which is going to be from Gorleston, uh, and it's going to go all the way up to Shirebrook. I just want to make sure we're using the right platform this side. It has automatically picked up the opposite platform, just so these trains weren't trying to use the same one. That works perfect for me. But this is going to be TP, as always, for train passenger, and it's going to be Gaul. And it's to Shire Brook, isn't it? So Gaul to Shire. And I'd rather have a bit more of a distinctive colour. There we go. So if we can get a just train just running for now, we can see we've only got 248,000. So I think we're going to struggle here for something until we do get up and running. Yeah, we, we don't want we don't need anything massive just up to Shire Brook anyway. But as you can see, these are into the millions. The older trains are sort of 731, so what I will do, guys, as I said, is I'll stick a pause in now, and I'll come back to you just once we've earned a little bit of money. I'll stick the date on pause before I do so, just so we're not, you know, getting any other unlocks or things that you guys are missing out on. So I'll see you in a second. Right, guys, I'll bring you back in now. I've let time run on a little bit, and I've also realised that we can actually have even more of a loan. So I've been paying it back for a little while, and then I thought, you know what? I'll let it run off after the end of the episode once we've got this other line in, making us some money as well. So, I've had a quick look through the trains, and this is what I've come up with. We don't need anything too fancy at the moment, so I've gone with this London South Western's Adams Radial Tank Train. It's a 442. Now, this has got a top speed of 45, um, and then I've gone with the passenger carriages. I've gone for the generic British six wheels, but I've gone for the green ones, just to change it up from what we had before. These only have a top speed of 52, which obviously is perfect with our train only having 45. So I'm going to grab one of these and stick it on that new line, which is the Gaul and Shirebrook line. And then we'll get to have a, a little ride on this. They always look really cool when they come out, don't they? All shiny and new, and you give it about six months, and then they're all covered in, covered in rust. But... I'm guessing over time we're going to be needing to add a couple more carriages to this. But for the minute we've got the front brake, first class and a third class. So we've got everything we need to keep the train uh, ticking as was. And now I've just noticed here that we've got some more. If I go to the paint tools, we've got more weeds coming down here. So as we're following this train down here, might as well make a start on what we're doing here. And then, I think in between the episodes again, I'll, while we're waiting for some money to tick in, I'll go around and make sure all this has been done, and that we haven't missed any. I just want to make sure this guy gets onto that line, and then we're going to have to add in a bus route for the new line, up at Shirebrook. It looks, it looks like a fairly small town with a fairly small population for the minute, so I don't think we'll need to, any, anything that's... Uh, too exciting up there or too um, too much work to put in so let's go have a look we'll make sure he switches over so he isn't actually stopping at this station this time or he'd gone in a gone would have gone into that side as you can see it's up to Shirebrook so he's making the leap all the way up and hopefully he hasn't missed any there's nobody waiting at Shirebrook yet so we'll just sort of head up and get this bus route kicked in so you never know we may be able to get some passengers down here for by the time he gets here I think I'm going to use one of these, one of these bus stops, one of the mods that we've got that's just a sort of a bus stop, stop street sign. So we'll go into there, we'll come down and do a loop around the town I think. We'll go down through the, the area there, through the commercial area, we'll stop at the industrial area and then come back down. This stop should already have most of this in and that covers the rest of the residential. So that covers everything we need in the town. We will need a road depot that I'll put over in the industrial area here. And then we have to decide what we're going to have. So, these guys are only 48,000 a year with eight grand running costs. So to me, it's a no brainer to get those. Um, so, we'll stick some more sours in. For the minute, we'll just go for three of those. We want the new line to go from the station and just a loop around the town. And that is going to be RP for road passenger, and it is um, 
Oh, my brain's gone daddy Shirebrook. So I can remember the name of the town then. Hello guys, Grounded here in the post edit. Unfortunately, at this point in the video, it looks like the wire had fallen out of the back of my microphone. So my microphone audio for the rest of this video was non-existent. So I'm just going to add this in, um, in the edit for you. But at the minute, we're basically just wrapping things up towards the end of the episode. And then I'm about to start talking about the plans for the future. So let me know in the comments whether you agree with this. But we've got the line that we've just put in is going to be the start of the main line. And it's going to run down through Gorleston here. And then eventually off up towards Bridlington at the top. Curving around at that top end of the map and down the south. With probably an express line from start to finish with just the one stop at Gorleston in the middle. With then a more local service in between. And then similarly... On the other side, down in this valley where we've looked at before, we want to have a look at having our airport down here, and then one at the other end up at the top near um, near Bridport or Bridlington, just so that we have a main line down each side of the river, as I'm showing with the mouse now, all the way down to the bottom, with then a more point-to-point -point service for the more local routes. But by having the only link across being our shipping line and airport link, it means that people are going to use every possible means of transport, I mean, in Transport Fever, people have two preferences. They'll either go for the route that takes longer but is cheaper, or you have some people who'd rather pay more money and go on the quicker route. So by having the shipping lane and the air travel route to cross over the river, it will enable us to um, utilise both modes of transport and keep um, all the different mods applicable. One thing at the minute that I've not got is any shipping mods, so if anybody knows of any cool passenger shipping mods, please let me know. Um, I know you can look at sort of getting the Titanic one, but that might be something we have a look at. Now here I believe I'm just trying out um, Steven Spry's ballast tool. Yeah, Steven Spry's ballast uh, trick with the time sped up, and it does seem to work quite well. If I remember rightly, there's a little bit of a skip here somewhere where the computer just clicks out for half a second. There we go. And that meant that I missed a little bit. So I do come back in a minute and just sort of skirt over that bit and make sure that we've missed none. This this trick, by the way, is an absolutely brilliant way of doing it, and I wouldn't have thought of this, so um, I want to thank Stephen again for that. I'd have spent all day just sort of moving around the track at snail's pace, colouring all of these little parts in. But for this one, guys, I think this is where we pretty much wrap it up for the episode. If I haven't already mentioned by this point in the video, I am going to pause the date in between episodes, which I think it's still paused from the earlier skip at the moment. Um, and then we're going to go in and just basically try and get as much of that loan repaid as possible for the next episode. I'm sure you I'm sure you guys could see that it was starting to hurt us and we were starting to wait around a lot in this episode to be able to get a new train on the line. Now that's one thing we did I'd completely forgotten about. This, and, and this line at the top end of it, there seemed to be more passengers waiting at each end. As the train was leaving the station, there was still a full train's worth of passengers. But because we're hurting so much financially at the minute, I wasn't ready to add another train on. So what we do is add another couple of carriages, and we go for another couple of third-class carriages. It does knock the train down, I believe, to the mediocre sort of spectrum but you know it's plenty of pulling power still left in this train for us to pull that but that'll just help us increase the finances coming in and it will also help us pay that loan back a little bit sooner um, as you can see here there's 56 people waiting and originally there was only i believe it was 24 capacity on that train so this is going to help us out a lot but yeah for this episode guys there was a little bit more where we had a little bit of a ride on at the end but just because the original audio is gone, I just want to wrap this up and um, so we can sort of get it into editing and get it out to you guys. So we're going to call it a day for this episode. And thank you as always for joining me for this long. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It looks like from today we've actually hit the 700 subscriber mark, which is absolutely huge to me. Um, so yeah, as always, drop me a like on the video, guys. I do appreciate those. It helps the video get into circulation around YouTube a lot better. Pushes it out to more people. And then ultimately helps our community grow. The more the more likes, comments, subscriptions to the channel, it just pushes it out and enables more people to watch it and sheds more comments, which enables me to make the series better for you guys. But yeah, thanks for joining me, guys. And as always, I will catch you in the next video.